So less than a week ago, we covered Anybuild's deep dive into the visuals and art pipeline for the A340. The wear and tear modeling, cabin layouts, service hatches, it was a pretty detailed look at what this quad jet is shaping up to be in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. This week, we're once again flipping the hood, the Any team's back with a full-on systems development update as of today, covering the flight model behavior, the ground handling, the fly-by-wire logic, and a whole suite of integrated features that honestly does push the realism and bar further than a lot of people expected for this aircraft. And what makes me personally most excited about all of this is how some of these technologies will be trickling down to some of their other aircraft as well, which includes the likes of the A350, the A300, and so on. And hey, if this kind of coverage is your thing, feel free to hit like or subscribe. It does help more than you think, especially when the YouTube algorithm punishes me for not being on YouTube lately. All right, let's dig in. Let's start then with a quick turn of fixes based on last week's feedback. The engine fan blades, which was a point of contention both in the comment section of my video as well as on some forums and Discord server, the engine fan blades now spin in the correct direction, which is counterclockwise and not clockwise, that is fully sorted. Wing flex has also now been fine-tuned to increase responsiveness but reduce dramatic flexing during takeoff. And finally, the EIS-1 CRT-style displays, the olden-looking displays, now in include degraded terrain masks and softer PFD edges to match their low-res legacy kind of look, which is also nice to see. Rain effects got an upgrade too. There's wipeable rain masks across the windscreens now to complement the full suite of vapor trails and atmospheric effects you're going to be getting with this aircraft as well. Slides, they also still deploy if you forget to disarm the doors. Just ask me how I know. I've managed to deploy them a couple times on the A350. I don't want to talk about it. Just goes to show though that any builds is listening and also polishing as they go. Next up then, this is where things start to feel a tad bit different from the previous update. The A340's flight model has been rebuilt from scratch using Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024's latest aerodynamic systems. That means that the fuselage object modeling is now sim-aware. What that means is things like drag, side slip, crosswind effects all take the full aircraft shape into account, including the actual engine pods themselves. The new ground contact model also governs taxiing, so you'll actually feel that long wheelbase and high maximum takeoff weight when maneuvering the A340. Overdo the tiller and you'll actually skid as you can see from some of these screenshots, which is nice to see. Flaps and slats are also now controlled directly, letting them simulate slats-only configurations, which is especially noticeable on low-speed approaches. As for engine behavior, now there's full fat modeling for the EGT or the exhaust gas temperature, the FADEX systems, the fuel flow, the oil pressure and consumption, the thrust response, which is now tuned to reflect the A340's underpowered nature. Anybuild says actually that you can expect up to 40 minutes to cruise at max takeoff weight. That's not a joke, that's actually just classic Airbus quad jet behavior, which they've managed to model into this version of the A340 for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. As for rotation and flare, if you do yank the side stick like it's an A320, you will hit the tail, according to the developers. Three degrees per second, smooth and steady is the name of the game here. It's going to be interesting to see if they actually come up with an animation for tail strikes. That would be pretty nice to see, but then again, that's just a personal ask here. The fly-by-wire system has also been retuned. Unlike newer Airbus models, the A340 doesn't snap roll back to level, which is pretty interesting to see, actually. I've never flown an older Airbus like this. Everything apparently feels a little heavier, a little bit more procedural right down to touchdown. I never even flew the Tolis A340 in X-Plane, so I'm really looking forward to trying this baby out, as am I, of course, also looking forward to try the Tolis A340 out for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 when it does come out. Next up then, let's talk about systems. What's under the hood here? The entire aircraft is being built with AnyBuilds' full systems depth, which includes the likes of a custom FMS with full SID and STAR support for launch, secondary flight plan logic, custom LNAV and VNAV systems, hydraulic, electrical network modeling, fault tolerance, and deeper logic layering as well. We've kind of come to expect this with the A350, maybe not on launch all the way, but definitely through some of their updates. There's also new stuff coming to the A340, like the onboard printer, which was something that was super requested by the community. Now there's live printouts of init and weather and takeoff data, all of which is actually available and will show up on your tray table once you print it. There's also things like the animated standby indicator caging with a functional 
gyro alignment, just like the real EIS-1 systems from back in the day. There's also the para visual indicator, which is an old school approach tool you can toggle via the EFB for low vis approaches. Never used this before, excited to try it out. And there's also eight cars via DCDU and the MCDU, which means you can get weather requests, vertical clearances, and full controller comms for online flying as well as offline flying if beyond ATC or say intentions and those programs start supporting this as well. Finally, there's also a Mora grid, which was pretty interesting to me. It's now rendered natively on the nav display, as you can see here, and it looks pretty interesting. Autosave functionality from the A350 also returns, but now you can actually name, delete, and manually trigger saves mid-flight, which is perfect in my opinion for long hauls. This is what I'm talking about. Features like this, if they can also trickle their way into the A350 once the A340 comes out, that will be absolutely fantastic. The difference between the EIS-1 and EIS-2 now also extends to logic behind the systems as well. For example, the EIS-1 NDs, or the navigation displays, won't show curved routing unless a hold or direct to mode is active. It's a real-world quirk that they've actually simulated off the EIS-1 displays on board the A340 in real life. And finally, cabin temperature control has also been modeled. There's four zones, there's real airflow logic, and dynamic shifts based on whether a door is open or shut. Leave one open in Dubai, for example, and the cockpit becomes a sauna. Close it in Antarctica, and you'll actually feel the chill. Well, you won't feel the chill, but the pilots and the cabin crew and everybody will feel the chill, that's what I mean. And finally, the EFB's interface has also been overhauled for a cleaner nav, better performance, and easier access to integrated services like Navigraph and Lido Charts as well. Meanwhile, GSX integration has also been completely rewritten. Once again, a feature that I would love to see on the A350. The A350 still has quirks with GSS integration. With the A340, you can actually now configure all aircraft-specific service behavior from passenger flow to fuel trucks directly from the EFB itself, which is very, very nice to see. I want to see that across all of AnyBuilds' products, as well as all flight simulation products in general. So then, ladies and gentlemen, here's what we're left with. AnyBuilds has followed up a fairly polished visual reveal just a couple days ago with a systems update today that actually shows depth, nuance, and a bit of heart, if I'm being perfectly honest. This kind of stuff is what I, as a simmer, actually care about, and I spot within the first 10 minutes of a real flight how much realism has actually gone into it, how many switches are active, how many things actually create a meaningful difference in my flight. Now, of course, will this win everybody over? It is too soon to tell. There's always going to be people that are going to complain, and rightly so in some cases, because the a350 launch was very overhyped, and when it did come out, it wasn't all that it was supposed to be. But if you were worried that this was going to be another trailer-first, system-light kind of release, this post at least suggests somewhat otherwise. The direction they're taking is definitely thoughtful, and the level of detail is surprisingly broad, in my opinion. Also worth noting, the A350 was just updated to version 1.1.5 as well, and we will be checking it out live in tomorrow's video, so stay tuned for that one. Should be a fun ride. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. As usual, guys, thanks for watching, and thanks for flying by.